Oh man, I would have been I would have been in big trouble had I not done that. Jesus. <laughs> Sorry, guys. There we go. Normally Gina's on this stuff. All right, we're gonna start this thing. Kind of let people come in. Um yeah, how you guys feeling today? Pretty good. Yeah? Yeah, excited. Very yeah? excited. Happy to be here for mm-hmm. sure. Heck yeah. Kind of projected this about a year ago. You did? Uh, yeah, so for it to be here, it's uh, quite humbling. It's Very awesome. humbling. You guys worked hard, man. You guys worked hard. Working yeah, hard. I like to think so. <laughs> That's cool. Yeah. Bringing it from idea to to where we're at today is just mind-boggling. But it happens. Hey, you- it you just know, gets it for, if, yeah, and if it wasn't for the cheaters, you know, we probably never would have done this. But uh-huh. they cheated us out of too many legit games. It's kind of <laughs> pushed us over the edge. <laughs> hey, I, you have a half glass full business, right? You're like, fuck the cheaters. Actually, let's make money off it. Let's make a business. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> I like it. I like it. Well, we're sitting at like 115 people. Um I always think that when crypto's up, more people come in. So you know, we'll give it a few minutes and uh, then we'll kind of let it rock. Cool. Why, how are you feeling today, buddy? How's your Twitter spaces? You seem to go well, you know. Um, went with cool. The flow. It was yesterday. So yeah. I always led to that one meeting, but I uh, had some great, great questions. That's cool. Yeah. yeah. I like the Twitter spaces thing. I don't know why. I just feel more loquacious yeah it's it's kind of a wild forum um i, I think they're cool yeah, i wasn't i was a little cagey in the beginning but um yeah. sometimes i've hopped into random things before and it's 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 interesting it's kind of fun like like watching random tv in like a foreign country or something you know you're like what the hell is yeah um, yeah yeah I love it. Oh man, I watched uh, I watched a movie last night with you in it. It was crazy. It's called Goodwill Hunting. <laughs> <laughs> Zing. I, uh, Affleck. <laughs> uh, no, you're not Ben Affleck. <laughs> oh my god. I think I'm the Ben Affleck in it. You're you're Will Hunting. So I I really like Ben Affleck in that movie. He was the oh, yeah. friend. Retainer. <laughs> uh, I love it. All right. Well, let's kick this off, guys. I, a very exciting hypergraph hour today. Um, joined by Wyatt, one of my co founders, the brains behind the architecture, the consensus, the all things hypergraph, uh, and Cyberly. Um, so, uh, this is a special hypergraph today that I'm excited to introduce Cyberly into the Constellation ecosystem and family. Um, learn about what they're building, their technology, how you can join them. We've had, uh, we've had a lot of good successes over the past six months. And it's fun to always bring new energy, a new business idea um, into our ecosystem. And this is something, a completely uh, different vertical. Uh, walking into gaming, uh, we haven't done. And I actually believe gaming is going to be one of the big topics over the course of the next couple of years, uh, especially what we've seen in kind of uh, NFTs and how people are looking to Web3 to have a little more fun. Um, so before we begin, I just kind of want to like talk about some of the growth of our ecosystem. Uh, we've had so much growth across the board. Our marketing team put this together. Uh, I mean, we're, we're showing a huge amount of growth up on, on Twitter. Uh, 38% increase since November. YouTube has gone up dramatically. Everything is really hitting, um, hitting some strides. Uh, our medium, we've gotten more uh, articulate through our medium channel on some of our technology, talking about the door traffic miner, explaining the use case. Uh, we're really excited about this. This has been a re- really fun to see a lot, net, uh, a lot of new people come into our ecosystem. Um, so I mean, it it all comes on the backbone of this amazing community kind of helping us build and evangelize it. You attract this new energy. So this is really kind of a hats off to the community and your efforts in in building more uh, awareness 
over the past several months, uh, especially as um, crypto has been somewhat volatile in the space. So like really kind of hats off to all of you. Uh, we're showing a ton of growth uh, across the Lunar Crush. Um, they've been tweeting about us like this is some social dominance like I've not seen. Uh, this is like what a brute force that we have in this community. It's it's really awesome. Um, you know, in stride with Lunar Crush, we've seen uh, a lot of growth in the DTM sales. Uh, last week, we did a flash sale on the door traffic miner. People are starting to see the rewards when they stake the, the NFT for the door traffic miner. Uh, we sold about $250,000 worth of devices in 24 hours and without any marketing. Um, so people are really catching on to this space. We're starting to build that, that data collective with just one device, uh, which is pretty awesome. Uh, so like, let's keep this up. Let's, let's keep it going. We've got a lot more coming down the road. Um, you know, we've, we've really kind of helped break down our ecosystem um, to being uh, to kind of showing the different use cases, showing different projects, expressing the hypergraph through the lens of a project like Alchemy, um, showing the power of cryptocurrency rewards and bounties through the door traffic miner, uh, which has been really exciting. We have some amazing conversations going on behind the scenes on uh, large groups that want to deploy these devices everywhere. They want to do it in conjunction with Helium devices, because as everybody knows, the door traffic miner uh, actually uses the Helium rails to process data over the network versus using cellular network. Um, so that's going to have a compounding effect if you have a helium uh, uh, helium, helium device or hotspot. Um, starting to show a lot on, on Web three and insights. Uh, you know, over the last uh, over the last month, uh, I've been in Dubai, I've been in Paris, I've met a lot of people. Uh, we've been giving talks on shifting um, shift the shift that's going on from the attention economy how we uh, monetize, how Google, Facebook monetize our attention, uh, where the consumer is really not a, a part of that uh, transaction, that engagement, and how we're shifting to the stakeholder economy, meaning how we're reinventing uh, how people perceive ownership and what a stakeholder really is, the, the individual that can contribute not just uh, ownership in a company, but ownership by proxy of uh, mm. marketing power, influence, governance, um, a, a real voice, and how that has a huge impact on Web3 and how our ecosystem is, is like no other. Uh, we also launched the Stargazer wallet for iOS uh, a couple of weeks ago. That's been a huge success. We've had a lot of great reviews there. We have a lot more coming down the pipeline for the Stargazer wallet, including Android support, support um, is, is in the queue. Um, and we've got some interesting things coming in the way of on-ramps. Uh, so uh, uh, really excited about how this ecosystem is coming. Um, and we're just hitting the start uh, of quarter two. Uh, there's so much more coming up that we're gonna talk through next week. We're gonna kind of give uh, some insight on the momentum of Mainnet 2.0. That's the upgrade of our network from Mainnet 1.0, what people can expect coming into Mainnet 2.0 and what's in store. Uh, we're also going to be uh, highlighting some of the projects in the uh, flight program cohort too. Uh, this has been an amazing cohort. Uh, we've seen such advancement of new ideas, advancement of where people want to take cryptocurrency. We're seeing different leadership uh, come through the fold. Uh, we're about halfway through the flight program too, and I'm I'm just personally excited about so many projects. Uh, but without further ado, I want to introduce. Cyberly, uh, which is a perfect segue because Cyberly came into us uh, about a year and a half ago, I think it was, that, that I met Jeff and, and James. And what uh, I remember having my first talk with them, and I was like, these guys are crazy. I don't even know what they're doing. This is just absolutely nuts. And then we, we started putting together the idea of this flight program, um, a way to educate people to be entrepreneurs and create um, uh, allow people to create the technology that they do, but put it in through a lens of cryptocurrency and show how to blend Constellation's decentralized hypergraph network with the vision uh, of so many people building businesses. 
Um, so Cyber Elite successfully went through flight program cohort one. Uh, I remember the early days and looking at their first draft of a couple one pager. It's evolved tremendously. Uh, and I'm really proud, proud to say that uh, they've made so much momentum. And they came back to me, they applied for the lattice launch pad to get listed. And they said, hey, let's make you a part of the Constellation family. Um, like I, we want to be, uh, we really want you to be close to us. Uh, they're addressing an industry that's massive. Um, I, I see there's a lot of potential for the gaming world to come into the decentralized network. There's so many different components, uh, not to mention that gaming itself is, uh, is really a part of the core of crypto. Uh, we all love games. Games are not going away, but we haven't seen a lot go on in the space of gaming when it comes to decentralized networks. Uh, and so one of the big shifts that I think is going to uh, happen in this space is we're going to see a lot more gaming mm. applications come into uh, come into the ecosystem, come into cryptocurrency. Um, so I'm happy that we're putting a stake in the ground uh, around something that's true to us around transparency in gaming um, and more specifically around anti-cheat. Uh, so without further ado, I would love to introduce uh, the Cyber League guys. Guys, um, I'm going to kind of let you go uh, paint this picture for us all. Give us a little tour of what you're building. Um, and I think we're going to have some interesting conversations with Wyatt du uh, ducking in, talking about how this applies uh, to, you know, data rights, data validation. But, um, yeah, square us off. All right. I've been in gaming myself for forever. I started playing competitive gaming around 99 just throwing tournaments in my neighborhood. Uh, it was like elementary school. I'd go around playing Mortal Kombat and uh, Mario Kart and other games on the console. Uh, I mowed some yards and I was able to afford a computer. And uh, I started playing Counter-Strike. And after that, I started uh, getting real serious about video gaming. Um, I tried to launch a project similar to this. I came up with the idea in like 2006, um, developed it for about four years, had everything ready to go. During that time, it was pretty hard to get any funding. Uh, and working IT, I wasn't making much more than like 25,000 a year. So I decided to start uh, doing like sheet metal work for the union. Uh, and I put a 10 year plan in place um, with this idea in my mind, um, well, a few years ago, I, I was able to quit that job and start this job. And I've been doing this for the past three years. Uh, I met Jeff playing video games about, oh, I don't know, 2007, probably 2006. And, uh, he, he flew in from Ohio to Kansas city. And then we drove out to Denver to go to Atlanta event that eventually didn't pay the participants. But from that time, as he, as he arrived to the airport in Kansas City, I was waiting there at, at his terminal and uh, he calls me and I pick up the phone. I'm like, hey man, I'm not gonna be able to make it. And Jeff's like 15 or 16 at the time and his face just turned white, just white as could be. Um, so I was a troll back then, still kind of a troll now. Uh, and from that point, we've been really good friends. Hey, Jeff, maybe you want to give a quick intro and we'll get yeah, into yeah. the bulk of this. So I'm Jeffrey Monis, um, co-founder of Cyberlete. Um, it's a disabled Marine. I got injured in my stint um, for that. So I use gaming as a more of a therapy. So I use it as a therapy to keep my, my injury sustained, which is pretty cool. Um, I've been competitive since about 2004 um, in various video games, Call of Duty and Counter-Strike. And I came up with this curious idea of combining league structure and esports and video games into blockchain in about 2020. Right on. And maybe you guys could do a quick intro on your CTO since he's not here. Yeah, Alex is a guy I've known forever. We played competitive games when we were kids, uh, pretty high tier. Um, he actually came to one of the events I held. It was a, 
it was a Counter-Strike event. It was Counter-Strike. It was Counter-Strike Source. He came out from Atlanta to Kansas City and saved the weekend for that event. It was pretty cool. Uh, kept in touch over the years. Alex has his has a PhD in machine learning, AI, has his master's and all his other degrees from Georgia Tech. Um, he's been in the AI side of things for about 14 years and uh, he's always been a gamer. He's still a gamer. And he's really passionate about what he does. And he's the kind of guy that doesn't cut corners and he doesn't want to submit anything until he knows, until he's satisfied with it. Right on. I'll let you guys get into this. Yeah, so the market, we're, this is the market that Ben was talking about to begin with. You know, it's $314 billion. That's just the gaming side. And uh, this is worldwide. Uh, I think the esports side might be about, what is it, Jeff, Two, $3 billion? It's about $3 billion, yeah. Yeah, about $3 billion. So the, the small parts of the, the esports, that's part of the reason we're catering to, you know, gamers as a whole. Um, we believe that esports will grow. But part of the problem with it not growing is the majority of the gamers, they don't know how to get into the pro status. And so we've developed a way to actually shine the light and help people get where they want to be. A big part of the problem right now, and this cheating in general, um, it doesn't matter if you're playing competitive games or just getting on Call of Duty after work and playing for an hour or two, and you're going to most likely run into a cheater and it's going to ruin your fun at some point or another. Um, and if you are playing competitive games, you're going event to event, and each event you go to has a different set of competitive rules. So you, have, you need to know all these rules each event you go to. Um, a lot of these events won't even run an anti-cheat because it's so expensive to run that if they were run to the anti-cheat, they wouldn't be able to play, pay their players. Um, I think if, as a whole, I think uh, the subscription can be like up to like $250,000. And uh, so game devs are wasting a lot of time and money on this when they could be producing a better game. Correct. Um, so we came up with how to fix that. The first thing to do is to KYC, the people that come onto our competitive platform, so we can know them and they won't be able to make another account. So they won't be able to cheat. They won't be able to enter a tournament, cheat and win, and then change their name and do it again. Just anti, yeah, anti cheat. Jeff, could you speak for a moment? Yeah, yeah. So the the ML, the AI ML anti cheat um, is pretty much is what we're surrounding this whole ecosystem around. Is 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 that that's our anti cheat? So our anti cheat will take in user data, and it will know if it's inhuman or human, and that will help us define the cheaters that we want to define by essentially accepting whatever the data comes out to be. Um, with the Web3 platform stuff, we are taking that at like a smart contract and allowing people to be play, paid instantly. So instead of like our experience in the beginning at that Everland tournament in Colorado where nobody got paid, people are gonna get paid automatically with the money that is, is present with the contract that's there, which is actually pretty awesome. Um, that allows us to reward these gamers and the competitors and the streamers and everybody in the ecosystem, instead of them waiting six, seven, eight months for their payment. Um, so this right here is like a start of, of the data coming in. Um, so we're taking gamer specific data, essentially from games. Um, and that helps us feed our AI ML, so our AI, ML will project this data, um, as you see, as these graphs here, and we're able to tell if somebody's legit or if they're cheating. Um, this is a very simplistic uh, view of this. Um, based on the data set that we're actually 
right here is just a mouse movement and clicking pretty much. And it's very obvious at the bottom, you can tell the cheating points because it's, you know, you see a straight line then it goes up and it's very consistent versus the guy on the top right who has more of a rounded fluid kind of nature to it. Uh, this is one view we're able to do it in. We're also able to do this in 3D, which does help yes. a little bit. So maybe maybe I jump in here and uh, kind of cue it in to talk a little bit more about how uh, how this relates to the hypergraph and building out state channels and why constellations kind of the only ones that can really do this. Um, yeah, well, this really just gets into the core of our value proposition, which is the ability to validate and capture data or perform consensus at the source. So the ability for, you know, whether it, regardless of what your server architecture system is looking like, um, we'll be able to actually collect information directly from these different users and be able to actually run that through some type of a distributed consensus um, that happens way closer to the actual gamer. And that prevents, uh, you know, these types of situations affecting, you know, all the other players on, you know, whatever servers are hosting them. Um, it, it prevents that data from actually even, even getting in and causing any problems. So this is something that um, personally I, I found really, really inspiring about Cyberlet and why I think that we're a great match for each other. Uh, thank you. Awesome. Yeah, thank you. Uh, Jeff, do you mind describing this part? Yeah, um, so CyberLead is a business to business and business consumer so solution. So in the business to business side of it, we're offering uh, for all game developers to and tournament and, and community organizers to like use our anti-cheat software and our API plugin. Essentially you plug into us or we plug into you. Um, and we want that gamer specific data. Once we get that gamer specific data, the anti-cheat, side of it that's what these the business to business solution is that's what they want they need this solution nobody else is doing it um we're trying to what we are going to offer is game developers re are required to use lead token that's a subscription based plan so there's that um for the business to consumer we're offering like a tournament structure for the casual so for instance say you're 30 years old we're kyc now you have a casual like softball type of league that you can leisurely play competitive in instead of going against the 18 year olds that are sweaty on Mountain Dew, et cetera. The point is, is that you can at least have your fun. Um, whether you're 18 or you're 40, you can join in and be competitive, which everybody likes. Um, we're offering that platform from the start to the finish and kind of giving a bunch of guideline. You're also getting like parental controls. So a lot of esports and something that does not have parental controls. So you're getting like, uh, you don't know what your kid's doing. You don't know what he's getting involved in. You don't know any of that. We're allowing that to be kind of transparent with the parents to teach the ecosystem a little bit better. Um, so ensuring safety, essentially. Um, so here's a, this is what our token, it's like a big gamer economics thing. This is what our token, what our token, what we, value how we value our token with data so the data in general is really intrinsic so like we are collecting the data inward from you from the users these users have will be earning leap rewards so as our ml ai is taking the data from you guys and we're learning all these human actions we will also be learning inhuman actions and what's provable with our ai ml that will allow us to reward this data coming in specifically um, that will that will be released later on with our tokenomics when we're revised. So this is this another a simpler version of what I just said. Here's a, a little roadmap. So you know as you may have noticed we start engaging the community we've grown from 400 to almost a thousand followers within about a month. Uh, we have our machine learning anti cheat finished. We've been testing it in house. We have had one community event. Um, some people showed up and participated. 
uh, and now we're starting our marketing campaign. That's what today is about, is introducing us. And as we're entering into phase two, we will be uh, taking on taking on users from the community to help us test in alpha mode, uh, kind of work out some of the bugs and such. And once we get that figured out, we'd like to do some promotional tournaments and uh, start working on the league side of things, setting the standards of worth rules and such. Also, we're uh, closely working with some metaverses that are interested in using our platform to bring valid users to the platform so they uh because they're trying to cut back on the bots on their platform and with us they're able to use valid users and the last part uh this is where we uh go to mainnet we hop off of testnet get on the mainnet play our state channel uh we go from alpha to just straight live and we can activate our economy reward the gamers, and we're going to be able to do a whole lot more. This is just the start. Uh, we got a roadmap out to 2030 so far, um, but this is what we can get out the door and what the gamers need right now. So guys, maybe you could highlight one of the things, like how many actions are you tying, are, are, are you thinking, how many like transactions, actions, do you think that you'll be identifying in one sort of gameplay or one user? It's a lot, so, right? Yeah, yeah, so one user will collect about 100 actions per second. And say there's, you know, like in Call of Duty, there's over 100 people in that server. And each one, we're taking 100 snippets of their data per second. And then you times that by the, you know, the million people that are playing. Yeah, we are, we are in taking a lot of data, a lot of data. Okay. So I think the fascinating thing about this and to kind of correlate it to the, the uh, community is uh, if you look at the door, the door traffic miner, and when you set that up, um, there's a lot of different aspects of that, that data type uh, or the metadata that we collect. And once that metadata is met and it's assured that that's correct, then we issue a bounty uh, in the form of, of dagger in cryptocurrency. Um, and what CyberLead is doing is exactly the same thing, is they're saying, hey, here's the parameters, here's what the metadata looks like, and they're going to be able to issue a reward or not a reward to counter fraud. Um, and I think that's a really powerful value proposition because you couldn't, you wouldn't be able to use a centralized database to do this or any sort of other currency, maybe some loyalty rewards or something that doesn't have value. Uh, but I think the value, the, the huge value proposition that they're extending is that their whole ecosystem requires a decentralized network. One, to validate this data um, and using Constellation, they can define the, that data type of user actions uh, and then know that the hypergraph can scale appropriately. And then the third major component that I think is, is really uh, uh, important is that the only way that they can do this is, is through a cryptocurrency. Um, because the cryptocurrency will allow you to freely trade that to other ecosystems as well. Um, so you could imagine that maybe every game platform has its own L0 token, and they can swap in between their platform uh, based off of uh, your game engagement from Call of Duty to Counter-Strike, for example. Um, so there's really fascinating things that you can do in terms of micropayments, automated payments that are tied directly to the metadata. Uh, so I think this is a very, very fascinating use case for blockchain that I really haven't seen come into existence. Uh, this isn't just rewarding gameplay. Uh, it's actually tying data to gameplay and cryptocurrency. Um, Cyberly's really kind of taken the onus of, uh, of, of taking all the different aspects of Web3 and the kind of evolution of where blockchain is going and applying it to their business in a way that uh, might be the only way forward. You could imagine somebody doing this from a centralized database, but what happens if that gets hacked or what happens if it gets spooked? Um, you know, it kind of de devalidates in a way their entire business. So uh, really awesome uh, uh, vision that you guys have in the space 
Uh, and number two, I, th I think that this is the time. This is like the right time to be introducing uh, me mechanisms and tools like this into the ecosystem because gaming is going to be a hot topic in the metaverse. It's going to be a hot topic um, over the course of the next year. It's really, really blooming. Um, and we haven't seen this kind of blossoming uh, since like 2011. Um, and what we saw in social gaming and people bring coming into uh, the internet with gaming. So I, I think it's pretty fascinating what they're doing. Do you guys want to like talk through uh, maybe your, your raise that you're going out, your plan of attack, uh, kind of your overall ethos and how you're fundraising, what you guys are looking for? Yeah, we actually started, uh, we just opened up the private sale. Um, you can go to cyberlead.io. <clears throat> look at our, our splash page and sign up from there. Um, we're going to open up community game nights within within a month or so. Uh, and with when doing that, we're revealing the our demo of it, our anti-cheating work. Uh, we'll have a little short video on, on that. Uh, hey, you guys are only... Uh, you guys are I'm only sorry, raising what? a little. You're only raising a little bit of money. You guys really believe in your tech and your yeah. Team. I just skipped over that. We're, yeah, we're only raising a little bit, like 157. You know, in private, and then you know we're trying. This is this is like a small cap thing for us. It, to do what we need to do isn't going to take much money, and the money that we put in, we're going to be able to multiply that quickly, so we're able to sustain ourselves. Um, I'm not trying to give away our company. We wanted to keep this for the gamers, you know, a long-term deal. And we don't we don't really need much money to get funded, just just enough to get our feet in the water. And we got it from there. It's the way we've set up our architecture and our database is um, we've, we've got to figure it out. Um, I'd also Thanks. like to say if anyone's out there has a passion for humanity and gaming and thinks they fit the cyber league, kind of brand um it doesn't matter what you do if you have an interest come at us let us know what you do how you can help um recruiting everyone from uh, just community mods to ai development and admins on the on the platform yeah right on thanks james so uh to kind of summarize for everybody uh if you're interested in their private sale um you know, reach out to their website, join their Telegram. Um, they're going to be, uh, you know, going through Constellation, working with us on kind of uh, community rounds, uh, community distribution, sign up to get involved in their, their test net. Uh, there's so many ways to get involved with what these guys are doing. And they're already starting to do some nice little sample case studies uh, around gaming. And they've got a demo coming up. Um, but ultimately looking to do uh, a, a nice community round for, for the ecosystem. So I'm loving it, guys. Um, awesome. Awesome presentation. Thank you. Thanks for having us. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. This is great. Anything else you guys want to say before, uh, you know, before we sign off? Uh, thanks, Wyatt. Thanks for showing up. Uh, <laughs> you're like a rock star in our minds, Jeff, in our mind. Uh, <laughs> after watching your video, just, just a, a few of them. We decided, you know, Constellation was definitely the choice before we were, we were thinking about Solana, and we just once we figured out that you you had it figured out, we knew where to go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he, he he's the one with the big plan here. This is this is the future. HGTP. And thank you so much, guys. I mean, our projects and just just you know actually. You guys are the people who, are, who really use it, make it, make it a real thing. So thanks for fighting the good fight and going through the flight program and having me here. It's it's really a pleasure, and um, you know, hopefully the first of many. Thanks, Cheers. thanks, Ben. Right on, guys. Well, uh, another good hypergraph hour, and uh, next week we got another hypergraph hour. Lots to cover. A lot of building in our ecosystem. It's been uh, it's been a uh, uh, a really fun uh, first part of the year. So 
guys, good luck. Let's let's make some happen. Let's let's blow this up. Let's uh, let's take the gaming world by storm. Thank you, guys. Let's do it. Yeah. All right. Thanks, guys. Thank you, everybody, for joining. And uh, have a good day. Later.